Okay, hi everyone. What I'm going to do in this video series is take you through this uh, touch designer network that has a few different quite simple implementations of how to take data from IMUs via OSC and use them in various implementations in uh, visual programming. So I've got two devices here, which is why I've got the camera turned on. Um, I've got a touch OSC sending a um, gyroscope and accelerometer, which we can see coming in here. And then I've also got the sensor tile running through the bridging app, which we can see within this input here. So what I'll do in this uh, first tutorial is just walk you through everything in this file, which you'll have, and just show you how they're all operating. Uh, the first thing on the far left hand side, for those of you who have not used Touch Designer before, I'll keep this as beginner friendly as possible. Um, however, you know, there's um, a whole host of beginner tutorials out there. But basically, Touch Designer will always read from uh, left to right, our inputs on the left, our outputs on the right, and I'm just using my scroll wheel to move in and out. So on the left hand side, we've got our OSC in chops. A chop just stands for a channel operator. If I double click my left mouse and I'm in the chop section, I grab these from here, OSC in. Okay, I'll delete that extra one. Okay, so on my input, um, this is my sensor tile, and you, this is now telling me all the different channels that are coming in via our bridging app. And then here, um, this is my uh, touch OSC coming from my phone. I might make some separate short videos just showing how to connect them. Um, and then what I've got here is a switch, just so I can alternate between using um, one signal or another. If I press the letter P for the parameter window, you can see this switch, um, this green means there's a parameter connected to it, which we can see from that arrow. And basically from my keyboard in here, these are the numbers one and two. And just with a couple of different operators, I've made a little switch that if you look at the switch now, when I press one and two on my keyboard, it's just um, switching between these two uh, inputs. And then each of these, um, these are little containers or bases, and you can think of these as a folder. If I zoom into it, you'll see it's got another little network in there, and each one of them, if I zoom in and out, has its own little network inside there. And at the beginning, there are some inputs, and at the end, there are outputs. This output is a signal output or a channel output that's giving me my processed OSC in case I want to use it, and this purple one is the graphics output. Okay, so I've made four of these different uh, graphic systems and some switches here so I can toggle between them. If I, if I look here at my final output, which I've called graphics out, this little blue um, tab, that just previews the display in our um, canvas behind here, which will show us what this final output would look like if we were sending it to a projector or something like that. So um, if I do that now, um, this button in the top corner here, perform mode. Um, yours might look like a little envelope. Mine just looks like the letter four, number four. This is sort of our final output. So this is, at the moment, it's connected to my phone um, with um, touch OSC running. But if I press the number one on my keyboard, which is just what I've connected to that switch, you can see my phone is no longer controlling it, even though I'm still getting the gyroscope and accelerometer signals. But if I pick up the sensor tile, you can see that that is now mapped to the sensor tile. And from this um, operation alone, you can see that I'm just taking one axis of rotation. In this case, it's from the accelerometer, and I'm mapping it to um, a 3D model of a violin bow, which then I've just duplicated six times and put on top of a, a little graphical generator, which is a ramp um, with some you know color and repetition added. Okay, so, um, is there anything else to walk you through before I go into some individual tutorials? Um, no, I think I think this is about it. What I'm going to do in the next tutorials is just one at a time. I'm going to walk you through rebuilding a few of these. Or actually, maybe I'll just in, uh, uh, introduce what they what each of them are. So I've labeled them all here: 3D model rotation. I might just turn off the background preview so it's a little bit clearer what we're looking at. 3D model rotation. Um, it's a little self-explanatory by its name. Um, if I pick up the sensor tile, you can see if I zoom in here, it's, it's rotating the bows. The second one, 
I've just made it an input switcher. So at the moment, I've just attached different colors. So if I rotate my center tile to different angles, it's changing the color input. But of course, that color input could be a different video file or a different 3D object, anything. It's just the idea of um, taking this rotation value and turning it to an integer, which we can use connected to a switch. Um, the HSV control here, um, I've just put like a fitness video behind it. But here, if I, if I twist or if I rotate on the same axis of the accelerometer, I'm just changing the overlay of hue saturation value. So in this case, I'm just shifting around the color wheel, around the hue wheel, using the angle of the accelerometer. And I'm just doing that with a different offset in different parts of the screen. And this, this one at the end has a little more complexity. It's got one more um, uh, channel added. So I've got one axis of rotation. I should be able to rotate like, oh no, so it's this one. If, if I twist it, it's like that. So you can see I'm twisting, oh, pop my sensor off, twisting like that. But also as I move it, I've got some of my acceleration. So I've got this sort of barbell shape that on the one hand can rotate or can pivot, but also um, can move around in space, which is taking the accelerometer and um, linking it to the position or the translation in space of the object. Okay, so I'll go through these one at a time, um, but this is just the uh, introduction. And then finally, what I put at the end, just in case it's useful, if you're going back to something like um, to Max MSP, I've got an OSC out, which is sending the OSC out on the network port uh, 8000. And that's just in case, in case you do some interesting mappings here that you want to then send back into Max um, with all of the different like math operations and, and what have you, you can then send that back to Max and um, reincorporate that back into your real-time composition as well. Okay, so in the next video, I will uh, take you through some more detail of how each of these networks work. Okay, bye-bye.